types of data. Hot data is data that is used frequently by the algorithm. And cold data is used seldomly or not at all. Uh, and hot data is obviously what benefits from caching because data that's used not at all or seldomly, yeah, either won't be in the cache or if it's in the cache, won't be accessed again while it's in the cache. So you should make sure that hot data yeah, is being cached properly. For example, if you have a very simple program that just counts how often each character in a text file occurs. Then you have some array for each character code and count how often these characters occur. That array will usually, usually be hot data because it's a small region of memory that's accessed every single byte you process. While the text message itself, which is just read once through, is cold data because it's just accessed once. And you should make sure your hot data is cached efficiently. So uh, don't mix hot and cold data in the same part of memory. This is basically the same thing as you have um, with, yeah, just skipping a few bytes and writes. The same problem because, yeah, every time you access hot data, cold data that happens to be in the same cache line is fetched anyway. And if it's not being used, you haven't gained anything by that memory access. Uh, so you should try to make sure that your hot data doesn't leave the cache and that you don't mix hot and cold data in your data structures because this is going to lower your performance and you should reorganize your data structures if necessary and possibly yeah, split the data you frequently access and the data you rarely ever need into two separate data structures, stuff like that, because it can really gain you a lot of performance. And well, that's really enough theory for now, so um, I'm going to give you a small example, which is, uh, well, fast broad zoomers. Okay, um, you're probably uh, thinking right now, yeah, this, because, well, yeah, rod zoomers are basically a 90s effect and have gone a bit out of fashion lately. Um, so, um, yeah, why I'm talking about rod zoomers? The reason is, um, yeah, it's easy to see what's going on. It's a very simple algorithm. It's basically just memory movements and the actual computations are so easy that we don't really have to worry about them so we can concentrate on the memory aspect. Um, it would show some nice techniques because, well, from the way um, I'll talk about tackling that problem. We can derive some techniques uh, that are useful in, well, more general and more interesting scenarios. And some generalizations of those techniques are very relevant in the way, yeah, programming and also hardware rendering, for example, is done today. So, um, yeah, what's the, the general algorithm? I chose to pick, well, an example everybody of you should know. Um, yeah, you have just a texture and you rotate and zoom it. And you have your current U and V coordinate at some pixel. For example, you usually, you'll usually start out here at the top pixel. And then you go through the pixels of the screen in turn by lines, for example, horizontal lines. And just, um, yeah, get the pixel at the current position, then advance that position by some delta, which is the same for every pixel. So every X step, you add this delta to your U and V coordinates and every Y step you have different deltas but you still add them to your coordinates and that's all there is to it. Very simple algorithm and there's no obvious way to make this any simpler. Um, so, uh, well, we should first look at a few cases, a few examples of this if you want to get a feeling um, of how we could improve on that. And the cases that work well are obviously no rotation, no zoom. So, well, we're basically just copying the image. We have the same characteristics as with copying images, sub just sequential reads, no fancy stuff, no problems. I mean, there isn't anything that can go wrong when we do this. And similar, when we just zoom in, um, well, we're accessing the same pixels two or four times. So, yeah, even better. Everything that's in the cache gets reused multiple times, so we really get big gains from the cache here. Um, but cases that are more problematic are, for example, when you zoom out. Because, well, only half of the pixels red, red get used when you zoom out by a factor of one half. Because, well, every odd line of that image won't be accessed at all. Um, but in the even lines that get displayed in this image here, we have the problem that just every second pixel is actually used for the destination image. So we have, well, half of the data in each cache line that's fetched is actually being used and the other half is just lying around. So this is obviously very bad and there's no really easy way to get rid of this, or so it seems. 
And yeah, even worse if, is if you have 90 degree rotation and no zoom, assuming your texture is big enough and it doesn't fit completely in the cache, obviously. Because each, every pixel um, you write here is from a different, yeah, every pixel you write here is from a different line in the source image. Um, so, yeah, those lines are typically several, several hundred, hundreds of bytes apart. So you'll have a cache miss uh, the first time you go through this row. But by the point, point you're through, yeah, you've probably filled the whole cache with cache lines, partial cache lines from the data. Uh, yeah, the original cache line, which had this pixel, isn't anymore in the cache. So as you, yeah, start the next row, everything gets read again and you basically have a cache miss every pixel you read. It can't get any worse than that. In this case, yeah, all you have from the cache is actually performance degradation because you're loading a lot more data than you need. So how can we fix those problems? Um, yeah, for zooming out, we see uh, that cache usage suffers. Um, so what can we do to make this better? Well, the easiest possible solution is just to make sure you don't zoom out. But, um, yeah, how can we do this in the general case? And the idea is just to use, yeah, smaller versions of your image if you're zooming out that are already scaled down. And this is called mid mapping. Um, every one of you who has ever used a 3D API should know about this. And this is the actual reason that mid mapping is being done for real time 3D because this improves cache efficiency considerably. Uh, it also improves image quality because, well, such mid maps can be pre-filtered, which are much nicer filters than you usually use uh, in the context of rod zooming or texture mapping or whatever. Uh, and so this is a nice bonus, but it's, it's not the reason we do mid mapping. We do mid mapping because it improves cache efficiency. And this idea also applies to other problems because, well, instead of skipping through our data in big steps, uh, we can always use a causal representation of the data. So, um, like, yeah, a lower resolution image that we can just step through and that will make everything easier for us. Yeah, and rotation is a somewhat different beast and needs a different strategy. And the idea I'm going to explain was probably, to my knowledge, uh, yeah, first described by Niklas Beisert of Pascal of Cubic Team in 1995. And what you do is very simple. You don't render the image line by line, as I first explained but instead you render an 8 by 8 pixel block, small squares. Um, because the main problem was that we went too far in one direction, yeah, in the source image, before we reuse that line again. So by rendering the small squares, we make sure that we never get too far from the original pixel position uh, before yeah, fetching something, some pixel that's going to be close to it, either in one or the other direction. Um, so we fixed that problem. And uh, yeah, what 3D cards do in this case is actually they reorder the texture instead, which is called swizzling or texture swizzling. And well, this is the same idea, and this also has the same effect on cache usage. You're just reordering the source instead of the destination image, so this is not a big deal. But it's somewhat harder to visualize what's happening because, well, um, image assessors in a swizzled image are just pretty erratic when you look at them, at the numbers. Uh, so I talked about the other variant because it's easier to visualize. And all that said, if you're just, um, yeah, rod zooming small images, that's, there's not much different on current CPUs because it's said caches have gotten a lot bigger since 1995. But then, yeah, this effect was for Pentium 1, which had like 8 kilobytes of cache. By now we have, well, several cache levels with, say, 1 megabyte of level 3 cache, and, 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, stuff like that. Um, so the, 